Welcome to some more Rail 2 1946 and a MiG-23M over Crimea. Um, we are intercepting the same targets as the last time, just this time they are at 12 kilometers. And we will be employing radar and the radar guided uh, R-23R. Uh, the first pass will be from the frontal hemisphere. Uh, then I will loop back and perform another attack from the rear hemisphere. Uh, the recording is going to be laggier this time because I have decided to use higher resolution so that you can actually see what's going on on the scope uh, a bit better. The frame rate isn't all that important. What really matters to me right now is that you can actually see what's going on on the screen. Um, so let's turn on the radar and it's at 120 kilometers scanning in four bars shall now go into afterburner and climb for altitude As you can see, I'm already over the coast. Um, somewhere roughly here. Shouldn't be going supersonic yet. We still have the drop tank. Once we are on the drop tank dry, we will drop it and uh, continue supersonic. Here we have the wingman. Sort of trying to get into the frame. Hello. Climbing through 9 kilometers to 10 kilometers. You can barely see some stars in the sky. It's uh, 4 in the morning. I need to trim a bit up. 130 kilometers. And apparently I can already see them, which is weird. Or whatever that was. Let's go back down again. Yeah, I shouldn't be seeing them yet, so whatever that was. It was probably my AOX actually. Because uh, I don't have the 
models for ground-based uh, radars that I'm um, using an E3. Targets at, at this altitude should be visible at 60 kilometers. I have slightly increased the range on the radar uh, compared to the reality. In reality, it should be between uh, 50 and 55 kilometers. I'm using 60 just because it's a better number to work with. I might reduce it later. It also allows me to actually uh, fine tune the radar a bit better because I am. It allows me to work at uh, longer ranges, and that gives me a lot more time for testing. So I'm steadily climbing. Targets apparently at eight kilometers though. So I might actually level out. And um we'll sit no. It was a little speck on the radar, I thought that was a contact, but no. Anyway, to the radar. I have managed to get it to stabilize properly in both roll and pitch, and uh, apparently, we should already see them, uh, but I'm highly off both sides, so. to turn into them there we go ah there we go and we're already in the range for launching our uh, 23. This is going to be a highly oblique shot, so it's probably going to miss. There we go, missile away. And it's snaking its way towards the target. Yep, it's one down. And we go. Second one. I can already see him on the screen. As you can see, the semi active missile actually requires a lock and I'm now going to take the other one with R13 and is a problem, he's pooping out flares. <laughs> 
doesn't really matter, we can just go for another attack. Which is actually what we planned from the beginning. I will in fact order my wingman to keep his drop tank and go for it. We will gain some separation here, just so we have a bit more comfortable time actually reaching the target and attacking. Should be enough. Let's bring her around. Yeah, it's it's kind of handful to properly pilot a plane when half of the frames is lost. There we go. Zooming it out. As you can see, the symbology for radar tracking is a bit offset. As far as I could find, this is kind of correct. The crosshair should be pulled down to the middle of the screen. While the circle is either on top of the target, which it is now, or it is... Um, if I go to three, sub 3 kilometers mode, this is for gunnery. I might go into explaining it a bit more, but essentially uh, the dot now points at the target, the circle points between the crosshair and the target, and it's all squished down by uh, roughly one degree. Pointing the missile at the target. And one away. He didn't see that one coming. And that's it. Now I can go and land. <laughs> 